Welcome to Retro Crisis. Collecting trophies on PlayStation and achievements on Steam are some of my favourite things to do. I find it so addictive. But did you know it's also possible to collect achievements in retro games? So the first thing you want to do is go to retroachievements.org and click on the register button to register for an account. Then once you've done that, you'll need to download a specialized emulator which is compatible with retro achievements. You can do that by going to the download section and here you'll see a list of various emulators and you'll also see which systems they support. Alternatively, if you don't want to use one of these emulators, you can also use software such as RetroArch, Recalbox, Raspberry Pi or Lacquer. I'm sure others are available too. If you do decide to use software such as RetroArch, Recalbox, Raspberry Pi or Lacquer, just make sure the core you are using is compatible with retro achievements. I'll leave a link to a compatibility list in the comments section below. In this video, I'm going to be using RetroArch to show you how to configure retro achievements. So once you've opened up RetroArch, you want to go to settings and then go all the way down to achievements. And you want to make sure you've switched achievements to on. In the second box where it says username, just type in your retro achievements username and in the password box, your Retro Achievements password. Now I'll explain what some of these options below mean. If you have Hardcore Mode switched to On, it means you get more points for the achievements you've earned, but it also means you won't be able to use features such as save states and cheats. The next option down is Leaderboards. If you have this enabled, you'll be able to participate in games that support leaderboards. Next one down is Challenge Indicators. This will show a small icon in the bottom corner of your screen for any challenge achievements that might be active within a game. Just bear in mind, not all games support challenge indicators. Next is Rich Presence. If you have this switched on, it will send uh, data from your gameplay session over to the Retro Achievements website, which will show the community your current live progress. So for example, if you're in Green Hill Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog, it will display that on the Retro Achievements website. Next is Test Unofficial Achievements. I generally tend to leave this off, but you can have it switched to on if you want to try out any achievements that are currently being developed. Next down is the Unlock Sound. If you have this switched to on, each time you earn an achievement, a little sound will play. Next down is Automatic Screenshot. Every time you earn an achievement, a screenshot of the current gameplay will be captured. Next down is verbose mode. This basically means every time you earn an achievement, the accompanying title and description of the achievement will be shown on screen for a brief moment. And finally, encore mode. If you have encore mode set to on, every time you begin a game, RetroArch will assume you haven't earned any of the achievements and it will show the achievement notification each time you unlock an achievement. However, don't worry, this doesn't actually affect any achievements you've actually unlocked. And that is it. You're ready to begin gaming and earning achievements. You can keep track of all of your achievement progress on retroachievements.org and you're also able to sign up and sync your retro achievements to third party services such as Exophase. I hope you found this video useful. Please consider supporting the channel by subscribing. This has been Retro Crisis, thank you for watching.